Hello, friends. Today's episode is brought to you by From Within Records. Dimension 6 hitting the road on the way to FYA. If you're in Roanoke, Virginia, Boone, North Carolina, Jacksonville, Florida. I don't like if I said Virginia. Let's try this over. <clears throat> Hello, friends. Today's episode is brought to you by From Within Records. Dimension 6 Winter Tour. Roanoke, Virginia, Boone, North Carolina, Jacksonville, Florida, Tampa, Florida for FYA, and Raleigh, North Carolina. If you're in any of those cities, please support Dimension 6 while they are on tour. February 3rd, 2024, a Bob Wilson joint, Scarab and Warren joint record release, which is going to be amazing. They're being supported by Division of Mine, Burning Lord, and Discontent. So please grab a ticket while you still can. If you're not following From Within Records on X or Instagram, please click that follow button to stay up to date on all the current news. And like I always say, please support From Within Records because they support us. If you're looking for high quality merch for your band or for your business, please hit up my friends over at Good Fortune Printing out of Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. You can follow them on Instagram at Good Fortune Printing, or if you want to get in contact with them, please email them contact at goodfortuneprinting.com. You can thank me later. On today's episode, we had to track down our good friend Adam, plays in a band called Cold Kiss out of Albany, New York. I think they're an awesome band. They dropped a promo back in october which is awesome i'm a big fan of the song measure the loss if you're not familiar please hit pause go boot up your spotify apple music title bandcamp youtube or whatever go stream the demo go stream the promo there's more new music on the way i think cold kiss is an awesome band i had a lot of fun talking to adam hearing about what he's doing for the scene up there and putting in work, which I, I think is awesome, right? Not only is he doing the band Cold Kiss, but he's booking shows. He's trying to help, uh, you know, keep the scene up there in Albany alive. I, I, I just think it's really cool to, to hear his story. And I'm a fan of the band, fan of the music. So I hope all of you check it out and then come back here and enjoy my conversation it was really fun to be able to talk to adam we we get into it right we we, we talk about our, our love for joe rogan which is always fun for me because I, i'm constantly uh listening to joe rogan i'm inspired by the podcast uh if you're a fan of mma go check out the last uh, jre mma show with bo nickel which was awesome I'm a, I was a fan of Bo Nickel before, but after that episode, I'm, I'm a bigger fan. Uh, it's just, it, it was just fun. Like, like many of you know who listen to this podcast, I uh, always talk about Joe Rogan. I'm a longtime supporter, and it's always fun running into somebody else who is a fan just, just like myself. So please strap in, enjoy this conversation. Without further ado, welcome Adam to the show. Recording. Welcome to the podcast, Adam. How's it going? So, man, how are you? I'm just chilling. If I'm being honest, I have like I've been sitting here all fucking day because I've been um, editing. Cause I'm leaving the country in a couple of days. Oh shit! Where are you going? I'm going to Colombia, which is uh, kind of insane to think about because um, uh, last year my buddy Jeff and Carl they went down there for this fest. Uh, which is being put on by the dudes from Raw Brigade, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And yep. They, they they tried to get me to go, but I just didn't have uh, any more time off from a, like from work because I, I already like allocated like all my 
paid time off for like other vacations. And they just kind of asked me it just at a like hard time. So I, I told them, I'm like, I can't go this year, but if you guys go next year, uh, I'm like hundred percent down. So they held me to it. And, uh, you know, here we are about a year later and we're about to leave the country. We're about to go to Columbia for, for hardcore. Dude, it's, it's pretty sick. And like, I saw the videos from last year and it looked pretty wild. Yeah. I and um, Jeff put me onto this new band from out there called spit out and I, I, I like commented on the 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 fest instagram because they had just posted the set times for this upcoming weekend and i, I just commented mm -hmm. like yo like uh, looking forward to seeing spit out and like a bunch of people were like interacting with it and i was like oh like i didn't think people actually looked at this shit but i, I was like looking yeah. to see who i like liked it and i was like members of the band and stuff so i'm like oh shit this is cool like i'm looking forward to uh meeting them and just seeing them live because it's uh just listen to the demo it, it, it's so good Oh, yeah, I haven't I haven't heard of the band or checked it out. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a it. link because I, I got a YouTube link. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm sure it has to be on Spotify and Bandcamp yeah. and all that stuff. But I got sent a YouTube link and like they're like advertising it as like demo 2024, which I thought was pretty interesting because I, I guess we are close enough for the new year, but we're not in the new year. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's it's like sucks. Like when like you're in a band and you're like putting out a demo like this close to the end of the year, especially like when you're a new band and like an international band at that when you're like trying to get eyes on it especially from like the u.s like putting a record like any sort of a release out at the end of the year is like it, it'll either get really it's like the same for december or january like get lost at the end of the year or get lost at the beginning of the year because like you know what i mean like people are making their end of the year list now like yeah. everyone's gonna remember like stuff that came out and like from like in like the fall towards the end of the year but then, like, if it comes out in January, it kind of gets lost unless it's like, you know, the like the record of the year. You know what I mean? But yeah, shout out to Wreckage. I feel like they put out the record of the year. I listened to that the first day of the new year of 2023, and it's such a good record to, to this day. Like, you know, even through all the awesome releases that has happened throughout the year, I still feel like that record is still top 10. Yeah, it definitely like youth like youth crew style stuff like doesn't ever like kind of like scratch my like an, an inch for me mm -hmm. and like even it's, it's undeniable like how sick that record was like yeah. it's just like i'm like always been kind of uh into like just kind of like the heavier side of things so like whenever like a band puts out a record like that it, that like gets me to like turn my head towards it it's gotta be like it's it's undeniable yeah yeah i i feel like what uh they put out was something special and i feel like it, it just like set the tone for like the whole year because i was uh really into the idea of them like you know wanting to release it on day one and it just uh you know being put to the test and i, I feel like it, it's done a great job and i stand by the record I, I love what they did and i'm looking forward to see what they do in the future yeah yeah i'm uh I'm pretty excited to see what happens. And can you talk about how you got into hardcore and why you lean more towards like the heavier stuff? Um, yeah. So I guess like I'm, I'm 34. I like probably like heard about guitar music when I was like, I don't know, like, like sixth or seventh grade. Okay. Like, like, sticks and stones my newfound glory came out and i was like like i just heard like my friends over you on the radio or something and it was like oh this is sick like and then like from there i started like got like really into like new metal like it's like very like arbitrary you know what i mean like it's all the same like there's guitars and like singing it's got to be the same thing so like i went from like newfound glory to like slipknot and like slipknot and disturbed and then and like Lincoln Park and all that stuff. And then I remember I was like taking guitar lessons and like before my guitar lessons, I would like and the guitar lessons were in the mall. I'd go into the store called FYE and I would just like go to like the metal section and just like read CD names that I thought were that sounded cool or whatever. And I found Alive or Just Breathing by Kill Switch Engage. And it was like this this seems sick and like i listened to like 30 seconds of 
my I think it was either my last serenade or number of days, and I was like just like typical metalcore stuff that I didn't know at the time. I'm like, oh, this is super heavy. And then from there, I got I like dove super he- like heavy into metalcore, and there was like this fest. It was in it's called Glens Falls, New York. It's like 45 minutes from where I live. It was called like the first annual upstate aggressive music festival or something. And it was like two days. And like the first day, Slipknot, it was like Slipknot and Slayer and Hatebreed. But then the second day was, it had like As I Dying, Kill Switch Engage, Shadows Fall, like all the bands that like I like found like through that like early metalcore stuff, like, like the whole like New England type stuff. And but also on that day was like sick of it all terror agnostic front that band i don't know if you know who full-blown chaos is they're like this like heavy band from new york city they played like the basement of the like so like the venue was like this giant arena it was like like a like an arena mm-hmm. but it's so, like the first day was like crazy sold out slip not playing like the giant stage but then terror and like sick of it all would play the next day and it would be like not even like a quarter quarter sold so it was just like this big open room but between like seeing so like i like remember seeing terror at that show and being like eh, like i don't this is kind of like fast like fast you know what i mean like saying terror is like like obviously they have fast words but they're like not traditionally known as like a fast hardcore band Uh but it was like fast for me at the time and then I was probably like 15, 15 or 16. And then through that, I started like just like exploring more bands, like downloading music on like Kazaa and LimeWire. Like I remember I downloaded this Hatebreed video. It was them playing Puritan at, in Hellfest in Syracuse. And I was like, this is the heaviest thing I've ever heard. Like, and it just was immediately hooked. Um, and then I was like going to private school at the time. And then I went to this, I like, that's when I started going to shows more often. And in ninth grade, I like left the privates cause like I was going for free cause like my grades were good, uh-huh. but like my family was like not very wealthy at all. But as I, in ninth grade, I started going to shows more often. So I ended up going to like the public school in my area because I like lost the financial aid or whatever, because my grades slipped. And there was like this, uh, this like little community center where they had like an N64, a pool table, like two computers outside of like, it was like super, this like very delinquent building. They called the den, but I walked in and I had like a kill switch engage shirt on. And some kid came up to me. He's like, Oh, you like kill switch engage? He's like, what other bands? He's like, I'm like, Hey, he's like, what do you think about this? And he put irate on and I was like, the fuck is this like a ninth like i'm a ninth grade kid this is like 2000 i i graduated in 2007 so seven minus four whatever seven so it's like 2001 2002 no no 2003 and i'm like they showed me i rate i'm like this is the heaviest thing i've ever heard and like i never like truly checked i rate out until like much later like i like bought like new york metal or something at like a like a fye or coconuts but I just started going like through that. I just like became hooked on music, started going to shows like, like bigger shows. I never went to like smaller ones until I was probably in like 11th grade. But I like was fortunate enough to see like, saw hate breed in like this really like a small room. It was probably like a 800 cap room, this place called Saratoga Winners and Tara played that show again. And I remember like, I've like, like saw Scott Bowl like a million times since then. I've like told him the story before I was like standing and Tara was playing and there was some dude. And in my mind, it's just like a Scott Vogel twin screaming the words to Tara. And he was like, so angry. And I'm like, you know, I feel exactly how this dude feels right now. And so that just kind of like set the tone. So like going from like metal core to like, hate breed and like terror and stuff and then just kind of dove in yeah and it's awesome to still see hate breed still showing love to the scene they've gotten so huge 
they don't have to but the fact that you know they, they just got announced uh that they're playing ldb i i always think it's yeah. awesome that they're still willing to play these hardcore fests because they, they've done it in the past right they, they they played like united blood back in the day um yep. but to see them still uh you know be able to do it in 2023 i i think it's awesome yeah they they definitely like don't forget where they came from which is the which is really cool and i think like members of the band are pretty stay pretty connected in like the hardcore scene like i mean i just, i don't like know frank three going but i mean he talks to like sean martin all the time and sean martin's a twitching tongue so like and sean is like super tied into the hardcore scene still so it's like he'll, he'll any 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 like notable hardcore band that like you know they're they're probably like gonna hear about you know what i mean like they definitely heard of, like everyone in paper has listened to pain of truth you know what i mean like it's it's only a matter of time before pain of truth like does it as a run with paper it's only a matter of time yeah so, like, the, they're like here and they're again yeah, pain of truth is on a crazy trajectory they're on the which i think is like kind of like the second leg of their full u.s tour for their new record they, they just uh, touched down in california so yeah yeah it's it's, it's cool to see them um, you know get out there because they, they were a band that started during the pandemic if, if people don't mm -hmm. remember so for them to be able to break out and kind of just take over everything is it, it's very awesome to see yeah i can remember i was like um i was traveling for work and i remember like i was traveling alone and i was like three or three and a half hours or four hours from home and I just had to go for like some dumb inventory observation overnight. And it was the day that the, the, te uh, the pain, the first pain of truth release dropped. Uh -huh. and I remember just like, I was like driving a trick flight alone and just listened to it on repeat. And I was like, this is the sickest shit ever. Yeah. I, I just think that band is, uh, they've had a flawless discography so far. And yeah, I, I think everything that they have going is, it's all well-deserved. And it, it, like I said, it, it's, it's cool to see. And, uh, you know, seeing them live is is even better too. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I you know, I, I think it's awesome that you keep referencing um, Fye because those kind of stores don't really, um, you gone. know, they're not really it's a thing. Uh, th th there used to be two of them out here in Orange County. I think they might be down to one location, which is definitely sad to see. But uh, it, it's, it's just really hard to stay in business with that kind of um you know model because obviously things have shifted to a lot of uh, digital stuff because even like big stores like best buy they, they just stopped selling physical uh you know dvds blu-rays video games uh they're like in a restructuring thing which is crazy because even for people who remember there was a circuit city back in the day right it used to be best yeah. buy in circuit city yeah circuit city um I, I think they're still open in like canada and they have like a big online presence but all the u.s stores closed and honestly, I think with Best Buy, you know, with the stop of their physical movies and video game sales, I, I think they might be headed in that direction. I don't know how much longer they can last, um, which is, uh, you know, just a really, really interesting thing to see in our lifetime, because I used to be all about going to the the store and um, you know ruffling through the games to see what they have on sale or to see what I might want that I didn't know that I wanted but now yeah. it's just like becoming a thing of the past which is kind of crazy but but also i guess i contribute to that because i haven't bought a physical video game in years like the last physical yeah. video game i bought was for xbox 360 and it was metal gear rising and i bought it at, at like a walmart yeah yeah like i i used to play like i used to be like big and like very specific games like i was never like an rpg dude but like i played like like i'm like a product like how old are you 35 we're, we're like yeah, it's really, really the same yeah. age yeah mm -hmm. so like i was like a big halo kid okay like big like big halo big call of duty and like i remember going to all the halo like midnight releases and stuff and like now like gamestop is like that's like how long can they stay open like how many vinyl pops can they sell to like keep the doors open essentially because it's uh yeah it's, it's pretty sad honestly yeah i i would always just be so confused because like my uh you know i i have some friends i would still do midnight releases and i'm like dude you guys are waiting in line at like nine o'clock the game's already installed on my uh, pc and i'm already playing it's like they like pre-install you can like pre-install it now too right it's like the game 
of a game that comes out on like December 10th or something, but you can like, oh shit, but you can like pre install it and it comes out on, and you can like, so on December 10th, you don't even have to wait. It's just mm-hmm. like, yeah, it just unlocks. Yeah. It's a interesting world, yeah. Because I, I, I was a fan because I, I, I like going. Like I said, I, I like going to the stores and browsing. But like when, when I go to, to um, Best Buy these days, it's like since we can't browse the video games or the movies, like you know, we're left at looking at like TVs and like refrigerators and cell phones now. Yeah, that's like literally all Best Buy is at this point. Yeah, and like and like people trying to sell, like people from like AT and T trying to sell you a cell phone. Yeah, it's it's strange and like it, it, it's sad too because uh, you know as much as um, I, I like going into stores, I, I think uh, you know it, it, they're kind of on a clock. Where soon, like I, I I don't know if you've seen like Amazon, they've been pushing those like Amazon Go stores where it's like there's like zero employees. You just kind of go in there, grab what you want, and leave. I haven't seen one in person or been in one, but I've heard about it. It's it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's like we're getting to that point, right, where we're not going to really need uh, retail workers, uh, which is uh, going to be pretty interesting. I, you know, I, I worked retail before, um, and it, it, it wasn't fun. Uh, but you know, p- people need jobs, so I'm, I'm just kind of curious, yeah. like, what's going to happen when we're all, uh, you know, when those jobs aren't needed. But when you think about like big picture, like how many of those jobs are out there, it's going to be pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, it's like. Well, it's like, it's the thing with like retail is like such a big job for like high school kids and people like, like you're in it, like, like entry level jobs for people to like make money while they're in school or whatever. And it's like, if when that's gone, like, I don't, I don't know. All right. We gotta, you know, we gotta get on the only fans train before it becomes too saturated. <laughs> right. We gotta, we, we gotta <laughs> pump the only fans. I, I think we, I think we've, uh, we missed the train for the two saturated. I think it's uh I think it's uh there's probably only fans for everything. There's probably some dude standing outside of a GameStop for a midnight release doing an only fan. Yo, have you seen those like NPCs on TikTok? I haven't seen them, but I've like <laughs> I've heard about them. They they just like just do anything, right? They're just like Well, so so basically they'll just stand and like like in like a public space and they'll be reading their chat and and people will like send them flowers and then they'll like thank them. They're like, Hmm, these flowers smell nice. And like, they they just basically react to whatever gifts they're getting sent. But those gifts, uh, you know, you have to pay certain like coins to be able to send those to, to the creator. So that's like a way of like people like, making money which is uh pretty interesting i i, I couldn't do it because it, like it's like a special character like these people like they're like a yeah. they're, like one of the most famous was like this like a uh, uh, dude in uh, new york he's like is dressed up as like miles morales spider-man and yeah. he, he's out there doing it which is pretty crazy but, but also pretty funny too uh but yeah i, I guess in the future when <laughs> uh the bots take over and those kinds of jobs aren't necessary we have to find new ways to uh, make money it's I don't know how they would k- keep a straight face. Like I'm like I'm a I'm a big joke guy. I love like just like very awkward. Like I'm a big I think you should leave fan. And like someone should do like an NPC thing, but as I think you should leave characters and just be I mean, I guess I would probably pay if if Tim Robinson did a did an NPC TikTok, I might send him some money to to just do real life. I think you should leave reenactments. Yeah, it's crazy because people like I can watch it for like maybe five minutes and that's like pushing it. But, you know, they have their diehard fans that will sit there for the whole stream and just find it entertaining. But I just that kind of that's that side of TikTok's not really my favorite. Yeah, my my TikTok like consumption exists of like like I'll like scroll for like. Like five minutes and like send like my wife and one of my friends like a bunch a bunch of videos and then like me and my wife will like look at the tiktok that we send each other and then that that's it and it's like only in bed at night for like five or ten minutes and then i'm just like gone like i got i can't i can get i'll get sucked in and it's just like yeah that, it's just like there's very offensive pl- there's plenty of times on. where i'm like all right just 10 minutes of scrolling just 10 minutes and then i gotta take care of 
my responsibilities and the next thing i know it's like two hours later and i'm like oh shit i'm really behind i gotta figure out how to make up the last two hours in like 30 minutes which is like nearly yeah. impossible well dude and like some of the tiktok videos that i like my tiktok feed is so fucked like i get like these like videos of these cars just like driving on a road mm -hmm. like 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 fake cars it's like a, it's like a simulation and there's just like a, a sledgehammer that's just rotating and just smashes the cars that's my tiktok and i and i can just it's or like <laughs> just cars crashing and they're fake cars that's like that and then like crazy like boats on like the north sea like with crazy waves that's my tiktok it's might as well be boomer tiktok or something i don't know <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's really funny because I never see any of that kind of stuff. My TikTok, obviously, it's all catered to uh, what what we like, right? Because, uh, you know, they, yeah. they take note of uh, your watch time, your likes and whatever. And yeah, yeah mine's way different. Mine's all like K-pop and like conspiracy theories. I had like for like I had to like purposely try to change it. It was for a while. It's just like all Disney World. That's all my my TikTok was, was just Disney World over and over, like just people going to disney world really? was sick. Okay. i mean it's awesome are, are, are you a a fan of disney do you go um so I'm, i went like a, a ton when i was a kid like okay. i went to i've never been to california but i've always been to the, the orlando i went like probably like six or seven times before i was like 14 uh -huh. and then i went when i was 18 when i was 24 and then my wife had never been so we went last december okay so like it's like cut down quite a bit but this last time that i went i was like it was like my first time going as like a true adult mm -hmm. adult and i'm like obsessed again like i like can't wait to go back like i have a like an 18 month old son and like i'm just like counting down the days until he's like four or five where we can take him because it's awesome. like obsessed now yeah i i feel like i I think I went to Disney too much, but I, but but I lived down the street, right? That was like one of the yeah. main reasons why why I moved to Orange County. But I got a pair. I, I went like a whole year without having a pass, and then I got a pass recently. And the five or six times that I went, it was just really not as like it just wasn't fun. I I feel like it, which is crazy. I, I don't think I've ever thought I would say this, but I feel like I just lost the like love for it. Like I, I still keep up with all things Disney, right? I, I, you know, yeah. I'm subscribed to Disney plus I keep up with the news, but like when I go to the parks, I'm just like, why am I here? Like I got like shit to do that. I'm yeah. putting off to be here. And it's like, I've been here like, like so many times, not much has changed. Like I'm here with my friends, which is cool. All right. That, that's the reason why I go is to like hang out with friends. But they're in the same boats. Like we've all been there. We've all done it. Like there's not much like for us there anymore, which is crazy. But I, th that happens if you go as much as like me and all my friends went for like ten years straight. Like yeah, you, it's you, gonna you, be, yeah, you definitely run out of things. It to, loses to it, it. Loses its like allure because like so like I've gone to you know what I mean. I've gone to Disney twice in ten years. Mm -hmm. So it's like things are so different. And then like now like like being a being a father and like having having like a son like this most recent time that i went like i like it was like we weren't right but my wife was pregnant when we went so she didn't even get to go on like we we, like, we have to go back like i haven't even been on like the slink dog roller coaster oh like, wow. you know what i mean like that yeah. yeah like because i wasn't gonna go on it alone because she was pregnant so she couldn't go on mm -hmm. but like now like when i went the most recent time it's like like being a parent it's like you're looking at it through the eyes of like oh man like 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 imagine being a kid like uh -huh. like they're they could like walk in the park they see like someone dressed up as woody and it's like but they don't think that they say yo that's fucking woody <laughs> yeah like, they that's, still have like, that's like, not someone in a costume yeah. that's woody right there and i'm gonna go and like that's like the coolest shit ever yeah the so the magic like, still there yeah yeah that's crazy. Yeah, right. I, I I need to go back to Disney World. I used to uh, go annually. I was a part of this group before I, I got kicked out, which I, I think is hilarious. 
Um, so it's been like, it's probably been like three or four years since I've been, but, uh, since then, like, you know, like Tron, Tron. coasters. Dude, opened Tron up. looks so sick, dude. Like it's like, it's literally a roller coaster, but I'm like the, and like the avatar ride, like it looks so sick. Yeah. So that like saves me a trip to go to Shanghai because that used to be like exclusively at Shanghai, but now it's in Florida and then there's the new guardians coaster, which, uh, yep. looks uh, amazing. So definitely gotta get back there at some point. Um, but it, it's just gotta, uh, you know, and same thing with Disney world. I, I would go like, you know, I, I went like every year for like, I think like four or five years and we would do like a solid, like four or five days there. And like, like literally dude, your feet are going to be dead, dude, dude, oh. the, the last trip that I went on was during the pandemic. Um, and like, you know, like half the group didn't want to go because of like COVID and all that stuff, which is totally understandable. But I remember we were in this timeshare and there was like, like it was like a giant timeshare because it was supposed to be like a big group of us. But like I said, like half the group didn't go. So I, I had like two bedrooms to myself, which is totally unnecessary. And I, I just remember laying in the bigger bedroom of the two that I had like, like night one, right? We'd already done the parks. Uh, we just had dinner, whatever. And I, I remember laying in bed thinking, dude, I've done this before. I just want to go home. Like, why did I fly yeah. to Florida to do this again? Like, this isn't as fun as I thought it would be. Um, and then I, I, and then I was like, shit, I have like four more days of this. And like, this is like night one and I'm already like ready to go home. It, yeah. it, it was just such a, just like a weird feeling. Uh, and also like, you know, like people I was with, not like my favorite people to like, you know, today. So it's just like, yeah, mm -hmm. like, I, I just, uh, just weird circumstances. And it's just like, yeah, like that last time just kind of left a really bad taste in my mouth. So I'm um, just like waiting for the right time to go back. You know, like I said, it's like last time I went was during 2020. So it's been, you know, almost like four years yeah. at this point. So hopefully uh, maybe in, in another year or two, I'll get that itch and actually pull the trigger and go back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we're like talking about it. We probably won't go until like, my son's going to be 18 months. So like, we're probably not going to go until he's like five. So we still have like probably three or four years until we go mm -hmm. just because we want him to like, he's big. So he'll, he'll be able to go on rides and stuff. We really, we want him to like truly get to experience it versus like, like my buddy Tyler, I was talking to him. He told me he went with a six year old and a two year old. And he was like, the six year old was like the best time of their lives. And the two year old had no idea where he was. Yeah. So it's like, in a stroller sleeping crying all day yeah yeah dude and like like we go in like we'll always go in like december so it's not like brutally hot mm -hmm. but like i think he went in like april or may Jeez. where it's like just heating up like it gets like, like i can't imagine spending 95 degree days like 90 percent humidity in the park all day i can't imagine Dude, my first time to Disney World, I, I went for two weeks in the middle of August and like, fuck. Yeah. And I had no idea about like how bad it was going to be and like the random rainstorms. Like we're literally walking through yeah. Epcot and, you know, I, I see people in like ponchos and stuff and thinking like, oh, this is really weird. It's like 90 plus degrees. Out. Why do they have ponchos? And then for like the next 10 minutes, it's just like this crazy downpour and we're just like standing in a store to avoid getting soaked. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I've, I've, I've luckily never had to experience that that uh that disney world but i'm sure yeah, it'll happen someday th that was the yeah like so the first time was in august and then um uh after that i i only went in like late october so uh, some days yeah. were still a little warm but for the most part the, the the weather was way better than august yeah yeah no, you couldn't you'd have to like pay me pay me to go to disney in august yeah, it's it's not worth them all. You're so sticky. You're sweating all day, and I'm just like feeling so gross. And my glasses, you know, you wear glasses like with yeah. the humidity just constantly like fogging up, and I'm just like, this is yeah, so like annoying. You're, you're like on a ride that's air conditioned, and then you walk out, and it's like you just have to take your you might you take your glasses off, so they just like adjust, and then it's the worst. Yeah, and I've never experienced that. I remember we we got to our resort at like. Like, like probably like around like 10 or 11 at night. So it, it was a pretty, a pretty cool by then. But I remember stepping out for breakfast and just instantly my glasses fogging up and I'm like, oh shit, this is, yeah, <laughs> this is really strange. Yeah, it sucks. Okay. Well, <laughs> the main reason why um, I want to have you on the podcast, of course, is because you play in a band, right? Which, uh, yeah. 
uh, you guys just put out two singles uh, not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about the, the band and uh, how you guys got together? Yeah. So um, I play in the band called Cold Kiss. Um, the band started in like January of 22. Okay. Uh, yeah, where it's, yeah, January of 22. Um, so like just as the pandemic was ending, like shows were coming back and, um, Dying Fetus and Terror, like, um, had a show in Albany. And I was there with my buddy Alex and I'm standing outside and I see this kid. His name is Ben Ben Shaw. And I was, he's from Syracuse. I'm like, dude, what are you doing here? Like, like just a random, like one off terror dying feed. You know what I mean? That, that's not like a, a notable show that I would travel like two hours to, to go to. And he's like, dog, I live in Albany now. I've lived here for like three or four years. I moved here. He had moved here with his, uh, partner at the time. They had since broken up. And, uh, Ben plays drums. He played drums in that band forfeit from Syracuse. Great band. And yeah, dude, it's that, that LP severely underrated. I, lower depths. I just wish they would have come back. Cause like they came to California. I think like, like when I, by the time I found out about them, they'd only come to California once and then they just never returned. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know they, like they toured heavy. Like I know them and they, they were like them and foundation were like road dogs and just toured together all the time. I know they, I think they did, they did like TY tours and stuff too. Like Ben, Ben has some wild stories, but he, uh, I asked him if he was playing drums. He hadn't been playing drums for a few years. And I was like, well, I play guitar. Let's start with, like, I start a band and like drummers are like the hardest thing to find. Yeah. So I like, the, oh, funny story is like yeah it was like rate like my wife and my because we went to disney for christmas Mm -hmm. yeah it was like straight up like we went we went to disney like like a week or two before that we went to disney was that terror show so i've been there we like rekindled exchange numbers or whatever um i came back and like we came back we were in disney on christmas day we came back like so january 7th i like can remember the, the exact date he brought, he like brought drums that he had over to my house. We just set them up and like, I had all my guitar gear because I had been in bands from prior and we just like started jamming songs. We both were like knew like we wanted to do something like kind of like a, like biohazard, like mad ball style. Like Ben would joke and say like, let's write shades of gray 20 times. Like let's rewrite that song over and over in different ways. And like, that's, that's the band we're going to be in. Um, me and him jammed for like a month, like just like kind of like rough together, like two, two songs. And then, um, I played in this band, the the last iteration of this band called Born Low from Albany. And the singer of that band, Kyle is a close friend of mine. And I was like, I really would love if you wanted to sing in this band. Like, I love your voice. Like it matches perfectly he came over like like the songs and so he was down um i know you've had um the coal on from flower Street burial but so the guitar player of flower Street burial paul um because they, they're from the albany area as well mm-hmm. um paul started jamming with us for a little bit and we just like wrote the five songs that came out on that ep that we put out that year in 22 um we recorded it in may um just at, with a buddy of ours from here named ryan slowly and it came out we played our first show black friday of 22 which was like the first show i like used to book shows like way back when like probably like 10 years prior to that and we were like trying to like figure out like oh what would be a good first show like we got offered to play like everyone in Albany like knew of the band and like knew that we were jam- like knew that, like I think because I don't think the dem like the demo or EP or whatever came out until like September October of 22 but everyone knew about the band and they knew of the members and like like it had a reputation like it was going to be decent um that t- that pain in a power territory came through Albany and they they asked us to play that show but we just 
weren't ready. So we just kind of like ended up booking our, I just like booked the first show. It's like, it was, yeah, Black Friday of 22 was us, this band Halo Bite from Albany, um, this band Prize from Albany and Sunblock from Albany, all just all Albany bands, like at this new venue called No Fun in Troy, New York, like sold, it was like, it sold out. We charged like 10 bucks. Like I couldn't believe the show sold out. It was like, let's get 200 cap room. So it's small, but still like Albany has been like kind of hit or miss. That was the first gig and just been playing since. I think it's awesome to be able to do like, you know, all bands from one area and not really have to rely on like some big out of town band to, you know, have a good show. So I think that speaks, you know, uh, you know, volumes on, on the scene and people who, who are paying attention to the bands from their area. Yeah. Uh, that's like, kind of like we talk, like you, you, that you've definitely seen some like old, like nineties videos from Albany. Like there's like all these, like, there is this venue called the QE2 that's like now it's like still around. It's called the fuse box now. Um, but you would see all these old, old videos and it would be like hate breed at the QE2 or like Marauder at the QE2. But there were all, we had like this, like very like tight knit scene between like Albany, Cohoes, Troy, all these like very like suburbs of like, like the capital region. And there'd be bands like straight jacket or like one King down or, like stigmata or dying breed and like all these bands like would like be headlining you would see the flyers and they're like headlining over like life of agony or hate breed like these local bands headlining over like what appear to be now i don't know if, how national they were at the time but like touring acts and like those bands wouldn't want to play after like like playing after like one came down in albany would be like it's like it's like a fart in the church compared to like what happened, you know, like, and like, that's kind of like what I'm hoping happens again. No, I don't want that. I don't want touring bands to not get their flowers in Albany, but like there was a time, like we went, we went through like a very long stage where like local bands weren't like getting like the attention, like people weren't coming out to shows and supporting. And like, you would need to like, the only shows that people would come to would be like, Oh, terrors playing Albany. You know what I mean? Or twitching tongues or God's hates playing Albany. You know what I mean? Like, then you can get people in the door. But now it seems like there's a lot of young kids like that are excited to support new bands. So they're like supporting local acts and like the scene is pretty diverse. Like that show that I meant, like that first cold kiss show, like prize sounds like dead guy and kiss a goodbye. Sunblock is like, they kind of, I mean, for the best way to, they they would be rolling the roll in the bed right now getting upset me not being able to describe them like <laughs> but like military gun like okay. that's like the best way to describe it because like like military gun truck church stuff and then like halo bite is like like a mixture between like scowl and like uh they have like a ska part in one song you know what i mean it's like but like scowl is like, like the closest thing to halo Bite. it's like and then like us who sound like like trapped them like to i was like no one's playing tui inspired hardcore right now like i want like i want to see tui as much as i can like i was fortunate to see him as much when i was younger so that you know what i mean so like four bands like that playing one show is like such a mixed bill but that kind of speaks to where all these are right now which is pretty cool yeah i i, I think it's awesome i, I always uh, you know speak on here about how we gotta encourage the youth uh to to you know come out to start a band to just do anything to to take part in the scene because it, it's it, it's cool to just uh you know show up but it's even cooler when you can have a hand in you know putting on a show or putting out a zine or starting a band starting a label just anything hey. to, to to help grow it because people you know could, could easily just uh not be aware uh, of a band or a, of a show because there's been times where i'm like that show is happening like how come i've never seen that flyer and it's because people Dude. just sometimes don't post it or sometimes i, I miss it because i'm not on social media like 24 7 but i try my best to you know stay up to date but it's like if we you know all put in the effort together uh and you know try to be as united as we can i i know it can be hard but i feel like if the effort's there 
for like just this one common goal of keeping the scene alive and putting on for your local scene. I, I feel like that's where the magic is, right? 100%. Like that, there was like a time when like, it's like Albany's pretty dope right now. It's like definitely on the up, but like leading up to January of this year, it was like shows would happen and like I would hear about it like a week before the show, which is insane. Like I've been like since I was 14 years old, I haven't stopped going to show you. I mean, it's like 20 years, which is insane to say. Mm -hmm. And it's like if, if I don't like if I don't know about, about a show, you did something wrong. Like I couldn't be more plugged into a gig in like if a band that I might want to go see is playing and I don't know about it, like you're doing something wrong, man. You got to like promote your shows better. But I saw that happening. I saw like that, like a little bit of a, there, there's, there's, there is like some pretty serious division between like different scenes. And there's like, like punks and like hardcore dudes and like, like more like big, like pro hardcore people and like big room metal shows and all this stuff. And like everyone would kind of like, book shows that would be very adjacent to each other if not there'd be like so much overlap but like they wouldn't hear about it so um i was like i went to new year's day this year in syracuse so what was new year's day this year that was oh that was the promise another victim death threat and this this kid from syracuse lucas he runs this it's like I, th I think that they all probably have passwords to it, but like there's like Lucas, um, Dylan from Deal with God and Colin from Deal with God. Mm -hmm. And they have like a Syracuse hardcore Instagram. And it's just like they're just posting, like no matter who, who booked the show, whether it's Lucas, Dylan, or Colin, or even someone else, like if there's a hardcore show happening, that Instagram posts it. So I was like, I'm just going to make one for Albany. I'll make the Albany hardcore Instagram. Like, what an e what an easy like moniker like nothing you know what i mean it's just albany hardcore that's all it is mm. there's no like there's it's not gonna you're not gonna be confused at what it is and i just like started posting shows from that like posting everyone's flyers like we had like there's like a bunch of people that book shows here like i'll say black and blue like asylum shows there were like this this like it was called two dead hummingbirds and then SAR entertainment like these they would do like house shows and then there'd be like more punk like punk leaning hardcore shows it's called crisis isolation like everyone there was like all these different like hands in this pot booking shows and everyone's show would do okay but no shows would be like sold out or fucking crazy so like i made that instagram in the hopes that it would like be a little bit more unifying and it seems to be happening which is pretty sick yeah, I, I think it's awesome because I couldn't tell you the amount of times when I booked shows and you know people would hit me up for favors or whatever, but not, but, but they couldn't trouble themselves to just repost my flyer. And, I, yeah. and I'm just like, dude, this is this is so weird that you're asking for me to like book your band or you, you want to get in for free, but you can even do the simple repost. And I was like, dude, yeah, don't even show up. You're you're a fucking weirdo fake person. Like, just yeah stay away uh, like i i had to like call out some people uh you know people that i you know genuinely liked but when it's just like you know it's like this weird act to uh, you know be like popular or they thought they were too good to come out to a gig because you know it, it wasn't like the most pop and band or whatever but it's just like dude that's so weird right just a weird mentality so like yeah like it, it was it, it, honestly like for being involved in hardcore for so long finally taking that role as like the promoter and booking a show like I, I got to see like a whole different side of hardcore which was like so weird and confusing to me because i'd been involved for so long um but it definitely opened my eyes to how hard and how much work goes into that kind of stuff dude it is like so like i like purposely like i really am like doing everything that i can to avoid the title and th there, this is no slight to, to like, people who, who are like show from you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like, I like never want to be referred to as like the dude, the, the show promoter in Albany. You know what I mean? Like, like that is like a, like a title that I want to like always like, like take a step back from because like, like sometimes I feel like that, you know, 
I don't know if you're a hip hop fan, but like, um, there's a song by a tribe called Quest called Rap Promoter. And it's just like, they reference like, just like skeezy dudes, like trying to make a buck off someone. Mm-hmm. And like, sometimes I feel like that I'd like never want to be associated with that type of person. So like, like I've only booked, like I'm announcing my fifth show tomorrow in, mm-hmm. the, in this, like in this like iteration of shows that I've been booking since I start, since I booked the first cold kid show on black Friday. And it's like so much work goes into doing a show that I just, it was like, like, because the shows that I were booking, I start, I booked like, I think like I booked like seat of pain, seat of pain here and at one point i almost booked mind force here and when i almost booked mind force here it got like eyes on it you know what i mean like from like the people the dudes who are like promoting shows who have been booking mind force and all the new things like that mm-hmm. and i said and i said to them i was like listen man like i'm not like i'm not trying to be you i'm not trying to be a promoter i'm just a, a, a hardcore kid who wants to see a sick hardcore show in albany and and that's like kind of like the stance that I've taken booking shows and it's so much work to book a show. Like, and if you're playing a show that you're booking, forget about it. It's a fucking shit show. Yeah. Like we just did the, the second iteration of black Friday. Mm-hmm. So like, that's going to, I'm like trying to make that like the equivalent of like the Syracuse new year's day. It's obviously can't be as like everyone new year's day is like a fast and all day thing, mm-hmm. but I'm trying to like kind of keep doing a black Friday show in Albany every year. And like this year we did, so it was this band Cinnamon from Albany. It's like this new power violence band with like members of Sunblock. Um, this band Spirit Killer from Albany, which is kind of like, a, for the, the best way to describe them is like a Snapcase band. Like they, they truly sound like Snapcase. There's like so much groove. There's never like true mosh parts. It's just kind of like bounce the whole time with like super cool lyrics, super cool drum parts. Um, deal with god cold kiss and then broken vow and it sold out and i there were people at the show i remember like like the, like later that night like we after like the show was over like cold kiss play we played our set like i dealt with everything like show wise like promotion and whatever and i was like talking to him like i can't believe this person did, wasn't at the show and they're like what do you mean they were there. There were like seven people that I like didn't even see mm-hmm. at the gig. And I would like for sure wish I was like, I can't believe I didn't even run into them. It's like so much work the entire time. Yeah. There's a show where I, I was, you know, uh, the, the, the owner of program was like, yo, like the show has to run on time. And I'm like, I, I got you. Don't worry. Like, like here are the set times I'm, you know, got the show back line. It's going to run on time and everything was going according to plan. But at one point we were like 30 minutes behind and I'm like, how did we get 30 minutes behind? Like nobody, you know, played too long. Nobody, you know, got off or like you know, broke down their equipment too long. It, everything was running smooth, but just somehow we fell behind and I, I just was like so confused. Um, but yeah, running, yeah. running a show. Yeah. Just like a lot of responsibilities. I'll never forget. Uh, Shackled was playing out here. Some kid was like trying to argue with me that he knew every band playing and that he, he uh, needed to get in for free. And I was like, dude, I was like, I booked the show. All those bands playing. There, there's three bands playing that night. And I'm like, those are all my friends. I was like, I've never seen you before. I was like, I was like, you need to pay if you want to get in or you can go home. I like, I don't know you. This is, you're a weirdo. Oh. Yeah. And I've never I seen think, that guy again to this day. I've never seen that weird kid again. It was so strange to me. Yeah, like I think that I think that people are starting to become more appreciative of shows and like not like with the pandemic, like not having shows for a long time and like mm-hmm. people understanding now, like I like rarely have anyone ask me to get into a show for free. Like rarely. And like like there were like some young kids come that came to black Friday from Syracuse. Mm. Like when I say young kids, I mean like young kids, like, like 15, 16 years old. And I was, and they're like, they don't have any money. I'm like, yo, there were, I think there were like three or four of them. Like the show was $15 to the door. I was like, just give me 15 bucks for all of it. Just pay for one person. Like, like do whatever you can to get in. You know what I mean? And like, even then, like they were willing to like toss some money just to get into the gig. Like just so I could, you know what I mean? Like I wanted to, 
pay every, I wanted to make sure that I paid every band mm-hmm. accordingly. And like everyone had like got paid as much as I could pay them, which is. Yeah. No, like I, I've let people in for free, but we're going to come in like demanding to get in for free. I'm like, oh yeah. yeah that's yeah. some weirdo shit. Um, yeah. Like sense of entitlement. Yeah. It's like, Pass. Yeah, I I remember the the first show I ever booked. Higher Power was playing, and it was like a couple of days before some territory. I, I can't remember what territory it was, but I, I remember Scott Vogel and like Chris Link showed up, and I was just like, "Hey, what are you guys doing here?" And they're like, "Oh, like we're, we're here to see Higher Power." And I was like, "All right," I was like, "Your guys' money's no good here. Just just walk in." And they they were insisting on paying, and I just thought that was so cool because you know. They're, Cause they get it, man. Yeah, they've, they've they've both booked shows. You know what I mean? They've mm-hmm. both like they've been on been on the other side of uh, other side of that exchange, and it's like like what's ten or fifteen dollars? You know what I mean? Like versus like that dude who's putting on the show. Like if it doesn't cover, like those bands got to get paid. You know what I mean? And like it's coming out of your pocket. So yeah, like them giving you ten or fifteen bucks to get another gig. It's like nothing compared to like if you have to dish out five hundred bucks from your own pocket. Yeah, that that was one thing I always feared was uh, having to go to the ATM. But luckily, uh, the all, all the shows that I booked went over well. Um, yeah, I, I same for me. I haven't like a, like so. I mean, I can I don't the shows get announced tomorrow, so I can say it like like so we're doing drug church at that you no know, that spot called no fun here it's like okay. drug church in the 200 cap room it's like gonna sell out like instantly yeah but like we we just did me and alex casey did so like when they had that triple b showcase there that was like the triple b streets of hate day showcase or whatever in brooklyn a few mm-hmm. months back that was in brooklyn and the day before we did all the bands essentially needed to show wanted to show in Albany. It was like AOA, like AOA morning, like hold my own, Godskin Peeler. I can't I'm drawn up like there were seven there were seven bands on the show. And then Terror hopped on at the last second. Okay. And it was like we needed like two hundred and something to cover so like 260 people to cover like the the whole show mm-hmm. and i mean i ended up losing i lost like 60 bucks like which is nothing you know what i mean but i remember like leading up to the gig i was like stressing because like like all the other bands didn't have guarantees but like there was like a contract to terror or whatever and i was like jesus christ man like i like didn't i yeah, like, i've I never done this before <laughs> I like purposely wanted to like avoid like being in those situations for a, for a significant period of time and just like booking bands without guarantees and just like paying them like I, like paying them what I know that they need to be paid and you know what I mean and I know what they're worth you know what I mean like and like then trying to go above and beyond like the money that I've handed some bands they've been like are you sure like I've I've had multiple bands say to me are you sure like thinking that they shouldn't be getting paid when I'm paying them. And it's like, nah, man, like I know this, like the like gas is expensive. Like it sucks when you like barely like make like, you know what I mean? Like if you net 20 bucks on a show that you're traveling to when you're a small band, like that's like awesome. But if you can like bank a hundred or 200 bucks, like plus like after all your expenses are covered, like that's so sick. Like, like spent like a lot of like merch is so expensive now like yeah that, that was one thing I, I had to learn because i wasn't sure how much uh to pay certain bands because uh, you know like all the shows that i did was all with friends right so it was just like hey right. you guys are coming through town like can i book you guys or them reaching out like hey like we want to play orange county like book us and i'm like all right and uh most of the time it was just like just pay us whatever but i'm like no no, no. I'm, like, I'm like i get like we're friends but like you're on a tour like i want to pay you what you've been paying like don't you know don't give me special treatment yeah. here because i don't want to cheat cheat you guys right because if this show's making money i i want you guys to walk away happy and then even for like right uh 
certain bands, I, I, I had to call some friends and be like, yo, like, what's a fair amount of money to pay these people? Because I don't want to be disrespectful, but also I don't want to be like, uh, you know, cutting the other band short if I'm able to pay some of the local bands. Um, right, so, right. yeah, so I, I had to like, you know, uh, call people with more experience to kind of like, you know, guide me in the right direction because I was just seriously, I, I just kind of jumped right into this thing with like a kind of an idea of how a show runs, but not really knowing like the whole like business aspect. Uh, but, but, but it was but, like, like I said, it, it was interesting because like I, I never had to sign any contracts, but, but even like the, the, the biggest band that uh, I had booked, they were playing on their off day and they thought they were just playing for free. So when I handed them like an envelope full of money, they were just like, dude, we would have been fine with just like merch from the skate shop. But I was like, oh, I was like, I can't offer free merch, but like, just take this money. Like, this is yeah. like, you know, like a, a, a big reason why people are here because of you guys. So like, I, I'm what, what band? What band was that? I, I feel like I heard you tell, tell that story on like a different podcast. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned before I, a higher power. Like they're yeah, on, they're, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, they're on like Roadrunner Records, and like they literally thought like they weren't getting paid, but when I handed them this like envelope of cash, they were just so grateful. And you, you know, how they they they're from like, overseas, right? And, yeah, yeah, dude. and yeah, like, and they're on like this major tour, so for them to to play on their off day, like it meant a lot to me. But for them, they were just like wanting to play with their friends and um, anxious, uh, so th they like like they had no idea that they were getting paid so, and i thought that was like the craziest and like kind of like holy shit like th those guys like you know they're uh you know uh like first of all they were really nice like best like you know like it, the interactions was great like no ego just they were just like these dudes there just to have fun so for them to be able to put on this crazy performance without any expectations of money so for me to hand them this envelope and for them to be like surprised it was just this, this crazy moment yeah yeah, that's like the best when like you're dealing with like a bigger band and you they're just like real people real hardcore kids just like you know what i mean it like it, nothing's changed for them no matter how big like much success they have or how you know like big they become and they're still like just down yeah yeah and i slow down with booking shows like i i haven't like officially booked anything in a while but i'm working on some stuff so like as much as I didn't want to come back to this role, it's like very much needed right now. So I'm just like, all right, like, yeah. got to put my my like personal stuff aside, and this is this is for the scene. It's not about me. Um, so yeah, yeah. So I got got some stuff cooking for 2024. Hopefully, some some really cool stuff, cooler than the stuff that I've done before. So that that's that's, that's the goal. Is I always want to try to um, like improve on what I've done and make it fun for everybody yeah that and that that's that's always the goal yeah like i don't do like i have like you know what i mean like i have a full-time job mm -hmm. i'm playing cold kiss i have a son i have a wife yeah. like it's like i can't book a ton of shows like like i booked you, you know what i mean it'll be five shows in a year and a half like nothing crazy and like cold kiss has played two of them so you know what i mean so it's like it's a little self-serving on my end so it's like I'm not doing a ton like whenever like I have friends bands that are like looking for a gig I'll do what I can but it's like I'm not like actively being like all right you know I don't have a show next month I got to figure out a show to book like you know it's like it's like if the opportunity like arises if it like it's going to be cool like I have like a list of bands that I want to play in Albany, like bands that I want to see in Albany. You know what I mean? Like uh -huh. that I personally want would like, oh shit, I'd be stoked if I could pit to this band at the fuse box or at no fun. So like I want to book them here so I can do that. You know what I mean? It's truly self serving. I'm like, I know that other people feel the same way. And like if I can bring those bands here, then like that's great. Like you know what I mean? If if someone and like and like bring them here in like a really cool fashion and like get like bands from like surrounding areas on the show to like kind of like cultivate like both scenes like the hudson valley is only like an hour and a half from here syracuse is only two hours from here western mass is like like massachusetts the massachusetts border is like 30 minutes from my house not even so it's like like albany truly is a central location but it just kind of gets skipped over a little bit because of some past like reputation so now it's like mm -hmm. hopefully trying to cultivate it for everyone
yeah for sure you know you gotta kind of just show that hey there's like this whole new new wave and you know what what, what happened in the past is the past and you know there's new shit going yeah. on um and exactly. I, I think that's cool because yeah for your location yeah you're, you're surrounded by like a, a lot of good scenes and i i always feel like neighboring scenes should unite and you know kind of uh, support each other because i feel like that would, that would just make the whole area stronger yeah it's definitely happening for sure like like Alex, Casey, and I talk all the time about just like kind of like for like bigger shows that I would do, like me and him kind of like talk about doing them together because I know they like in Hudson Valley, they're kind of struggling with venues a little bit for like bigger gigs. Uh-huh. And we have a few up here that we can use. And like I talk to the people from Syracuse all the time about doing shows together and whatnot. So that's cool. I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, Streets of Hate and what they do over there. Uh, Alex Casey, uh, here's some breaking news. Alex Casey is actually going to be the last guest of the year for the podcast. I always try to save that last podcast of the year for someone special. Uh, yeah. and, and this year, I've just been so stoked on what Streets of Hate's been doing. And <laughs> people don't really know this, but this hat right here, which has been in like every episode of the podcast, this is a Streets of Hate hat. This is a, uh, the Navy one. I, I have the red on black hanging over here but yeah so i mean this mm-hmm. bill that's always hanging right here this is a retired shoes of hate hat that i wore into the ground crazy sweat For stains sure. but i'm a huge supporter of streets of hate love what they do yeah alex and nicole are awesome they both like it's truly sincere it's you know what i mean like i think they colin young talks about on harlow all the time and it's truly true like no other person running a label is pitting more or harder than Alex. So it's like a, a true testament. Like that dude lives it. He's all about it. And I, and I mean, like I've been seeing it. He's lived in, he's from this town called Wappinger's Falls. Like it lives in Wappinger's Falls. And like, I've been seeing him like come to shows in Albany and seeing him in shows like in Poughkeepsie, like since I've been gone, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so that dude's been around for a minute for sure yeah and and he's always been uh, kind to me so i'm uh you know a, a huge fan of him so shout out alex i'm looking forward to our episode later this month yes. Dope. okay and i i'm curious about uh, cold kiss right you had the release in uh 2022 and then here we are uh, you know tail end of 2023 why did you only put out that the, the, like two song release so we wrote so we actually have a third song that we didn't put out on the on like that promo that's going to come out on an we're doing there's going to be like an albany compilation like it's going to be like eight or nine albany bands we're going to just do like a digital and cd release comp okay that me and a few other people are kind of working on but we like wrote those two songs i mean i'm like I've been in like five or six bands in like my life. And as we wrote them and like, kind of like, like crafted them, I was like, yo, these are the two best songs I've ever written. Like hands down, like I couldn't be more proud of these. Like, like let's, and then we wrote like that third song we wrote in like five minutes and like, we're like, let's just record these, figure out what we're going to do. Um, maybe we'll put out a tape. Maybe we'll just like, like put them out. Um, started working on artwork with our friend Sam and we're just like you know what like we, we put out this you know the like the demo or the EP or whatever last year let's just drop these two songs see if people fuck with it and that was just kind of like the way it, way it is like I don't know if we'll ever do like a full length I feel like the goal right now is to like write like three or four more songs we record another song and then like we just put out like a four like another an ep and just keep putting out eps like that's kind of how people are digesting music and like now you know what i mean like i'm pretty sure like I forget what podcast it was that i was listening to about king nine but like king nine's like they're putting out like two eps in the next like two years or something like they're not going to do a full length and like that's just kind of like the way people digest music now is like singles and eps and like very rarely you know our bands like like pain of truth put out an lp you know what i mean like like uh-huh. big bands that like all the like neg like that neg lp this year was like the fucking 
best. Like, like bands where all their eyes are on them, like drain, you know what I mean? Like, like I'm talking like the top of the top right now. Those are the, the bands putting out LPs, but like small bands where like no one really like, you know what I mean? No one knows who we are. We're just like small band from Albany and, uh, put out a couple songs and people fuck with it. And then they like catch a gig and then we'll just put out like two or three more songs. And then if someone like wants to do a record, then that's when we'll maybe like record a handful more. But those two songs, I'm like, I think they're dope. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. When, when you sent them to me, uh, I was impressed. I was like, okay, this is cool. I, I hope this is the, you know, direction towards something good. Um, uh, you know, uh, and, you know, to, to hear that you guys are just going to, uh, you know, do an EP, are, are those songs going to be on it? Or is that just the promo just to kind of remind people like, Hey, like we're still doing stuff. So I th- so like the, the honest goal is to like, if I were to think there's a song on the demo or EP, whatever you want to call it that we put out last year called cyber knife, we, we record that. Mm-hmm. We record these two songs and then write two or three more songs. And that's like kind of like the goal. And maybe someone wants to put that out. That's like the the true end goal, like five to six songs. But like, I mean, we like spent a lot of time recording these. Like we recorded them with our friend Ryan. We sent like Taylor Young mastered, uh, mix those two songs. We had them mastered by a brad at audio siege like we didn't like cut corners with it you know what i mean so like these songs are recorded well yeah um but we might re- like there's like listen listening back on them now there's still things that i would have changed like pro- like nuances that no one would even know you know what i mean but just like me like being a little bit perfectionist when it comes to writing music like just like oh i should have played an octave part here also you know what i mean or i should have should have played it play this note lower here you know it's the same note but like you play it like lower on the neck versus higher on the neck like just like very like overly detailed things that i feel like i can i can hear and maybe not everyone else can but it's just kind of like always in my head so like or like and there's like one on the song pushing for war like live we play like the last breakdown like slower like like very on the nose like to China count in like play at halftime. You know what I mean? Just like some eight man shit. And like, everyone's like, Oh, you should have recorded that. I'm like, yeah, we probably should have, but we didn't like just like little things like that, that we would probably change when we go to re-record the songs. I think it's cool to, to know that you play it different live to kind of just give a different experience. Um, and, you know, just like something intro, special baby. Yeah criminal criminal they were, i mean like it's awesome that the king iron shows recorded but man what a what a world it was to live in knowing that like king nine was going to play that intro and it's not recorded anymore and everyone's just waiting to vibe the whole time like that i i can remember when it wasn't recorded and just like waiting for like that like like part of the king nine intro to, to, for, them, for like that dude rudder start playing it it's like the sickest shit ever yeah they're playing that special set at ldb which yeah. is gonna be insane I, i'm not surprised they're, they're the only band doing like a special set i mean like like lumpy is re-releasing the scare like it's like the 10 year anniversary i can't believe dude that makes me feel like an like a true old man like scared to death feels like it's just like part of like my i remember like seeing them play albany and they just had the demo out and like i remember like the time between the demo coming out and scared to death coming out was so long that like everyone was waiting for scared to death to come out like i could not fucking wait for that record to come out and like to think that it's like the 10 year anniversary it's like mold it's crazy mold. <laughs> yeah I, I i like that um I don't, I don't know if you remember like way back when in that time where like god's hate did a scared to death like you know rip for like the yeah, cover they, art yeah, they, yep. yeah, they they did the switch, and I I, I thought that was cool, uh, but yeah, it, it, it is crazy when I, I think like uh, uh, like a, a record like that where you know I, I'd already been in hardcore for a long time at that point, so for just to be reminded like oh shit like Scared to Death has been out for ten years like holy shit this is yeah this is insane yeah it's gonna that that's gonna be 
it's going to be like, I feel like the, I like we was looking at the LDB lineup today. I feel like Balmore is going to get a good, a, is going to get a, get a good set. Uh-huh. That King nine is going to, is going to have a good set. Um, who else? Did I, I mean, obituary playing a hardcore show, like a true hardcore show like that is fucking so sick. Yeah. I've never seen them before, so I'm excited to see them for the first time. Seeing that, like, dude, like, seeing Obituary and that, like, seeing Obituary to see Obituary is, like, you're surrounded by, like, a lot of big metal dudes, like, a lot of dudes just, like, drinking and, like, headbanging and stuff, which is sick, but, like, it's like going to see Crowbar. You know what I mean? Like, I fucking love Crowbar. Yeah. But, like, when you go to see Crowbar and you want to pit, like, a hardcore kid... Dudes who want to see Crowbar hate you. They want, they wish that you were dead. They wish that you were not alive anymore, that you were not at their show, that you were not in the room. They, they don't want you there because you're ruining their night. And that's kind of like the deal with like an obituary gig sometimes. So like obituary playing a hardcore show proper is like pretty dope. Yeah. That's how I felt like the last time I saw Agnostic Front, they were on like this, they're doing this bar tour with Fury. And I remember I was literally the only person moshing for Fury, and it was just so awkward because I was just, yeah, the most hated person in the room because everybody was like beer in hand, just wondering what yeah. the fuck is this weirdo doing. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's, there's certain gigs where it's just kind of like you got to like read the room. And it's like you can't really do what you'd really want to do, which is like a bummer because you want to like support the band that you're there to see. But at the same time, it's like, I mean, I, like it's like the same deal. Like, when i was like in my early 20s like it was like when terror was play like the amir tours and shit like that Mm -hmm. it's like you go you'd like show out to see terror and it would just be like the most awkward thing in the world when terror would play and then like the kids who like i mean don't get me wrong like i fucked up the first amir ep and the first amir lp like hard when i was younger but like terror would like tour with them and like a lot of like the kids were just not being into terror at all, and they would get really mad at any of the hardcore kids that went to support terror. Whatever happened to Amir? I'm surprised that they haven't done anything in a long time. I feel like I saw them. I feel like they're they're definitely playing a show. They're definitely playing a gig. I saw I, I saw their name on a flyer. Recently. Oh, well, I, I gotta look because I'm so curious. Because yeah, because I remember look up. You, been, you you have to look up the electric the electrocution video too. Like, all right, hold on. Yeah. You have to. There's no way you can not look. Okay, they're like they're, they're doing an Australian tour next year. That's what I'm seeing on yeah. their Instagram. And then, oh wait, okay, wait, where is this? Is this in America? No, this is uh, now they're doing like a European tour. Okay, I, I guess they're still around, just not really doing anything in the states. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I remember when it was like. Amir versus like the Acacia Strain and oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> I I don't I don't want to speak I'm not going to speak on that at all because there, there's some locality to that too but yeah there was it was a uh, I was fun it was a fun time crazy time but yeah I I just remember yeah that that band was just like the biggest thing I, I remember when, when they had what what was the album where they had like Kurt Angle and I thought that was like such like like the coolest thing that was. That was like the record that I was out on. I so the first LP is the complete guide to needleworks, and then it's either called Felony or the Respect Issue. I don't know which one he was on, but those are the two records after that. And I remember like one of them was like one record has Kurt Angle on it, and then one has the song Actually Girl. And I was like, this is a little uh, a little much. Yeah. But yeah, there was Kurt. I know Kurt Angle was on the cover of one of them, which is so crazy because he's so he's like like at that time he was like you know like such a big star. Yeah, um, I just I any time that I'm like I I'm a painful Joe Rogan fan, and any time that Rogan has like a wrestler on, I always listen because like like the Kurt Angle era. I like liked wrestling like the Attitude Era. Okay, but like. I like left like pretty much like once I got into heart, like as I was getting into music, I like drifted away from wrestling. And like once, like I want to say like 
Raw and SmackDown became like different shows mm-hmm. is when I was like out. But like the Kurt Angle era and like Stone Cold and Triple H and The Rock, that's like my like I like loved wrestling then and like now being like not a kid and an adult and like understanding like the physicality of like wrestling and pro wrestling and like how like taxing and how much of a toll it takes on your body. And like, it's really cool to listen to like those dudes do those interviews and talk about like the amount of fucking like painkillers and steroids they were taking and shit. And like, it's like so dark, but like so interesting to, to like hear about like Kurt Angle's like his neck is fused. Like, so like he's cannot move his neck and shit it's wild yeah i i used to love wrestling uh, until like, i found out it was like you know fake or whatever and i found out like right as like the invasion was happening so i remember i used to uh watch wcw and uh you know wwf back in the day and to see yeah. like you know uh, the like organizations colliding it was like this crazy like holy shit i didn't think that that was even like possible um, yeah. but then I, I found out it, it was like, you know, fake or whatever. And it just totally threw me like, you know, for a whirlwind. Cause I, cause like, I, I used to think like, all right, when I get in a street fight, like I gotta be ready to bust out a tombstone <laughs> or a rock bottom to beat these people up. I'm not realizing like, that's not how you, you, you really fight. Um, yeah. And like, once I had that realization, I was like, damn, like, like they lied to me like my whole life. Like I, I was like the number one, like undertaker mm-hmm. fan. I remember I, I got I got to meet Stone Cold. He came to like our local mall back Yo, in the day, which was like crazy. Sick. Yeah, and w- w- once like like you know the curtain was pulled back, I was like, damn, like I, I can't do this anymore. So I, I just was like really turned off. Um, but I was like, you know, uh, I, I'm just like very You're- casual these days. Like I, I still see things here and there, and obviously it's like you know like people that I like you know follow or I'm friends with. Like they're like super into it, so like I I, I see it all the time yeah it's like it's sick it's sick to watch like like i don't i'm not like it's like a like a fitness guy or anything but i lift weights you know what i mean and i like work out a little bit so it's like to just like i'm not like a sport in general i'm not like a sports guy but i can watch like any sort of sport whether it's like wrestling ufc or like you know football or hockey at this point to like and to just like understand like the amount of like training and like physicality that has to go in the athleticism that like is required to do the things they're doing. And it's like so amazing to think that like they're doing it at like the highest level ever. It's like, it's like truly like a privileged field to watch someone do something like that. Whereas like, I'm not like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm never going to say like, Oh man, we got to win this game. You know what I mean? Like, like, like attaching myself to some, like team or person but it's still sick to watch yeah no for sure i I, i've been to a a couple wwe events live and it's so much fun even like not being like super into it like i was when i was a kid but like getting to see like uh you know some of like my more like modern favorites like john cena wrestle i'm like oh shit like yeah like, like that's awesome and then I remember me and my buddy, we like went to this gas station that's like right by the Honda Center where like Raw was happening like that night. And mm-hmm. um, we walked in and I was like looking for like some candy or some snacks or whatever. And in walks Randy Orton. And I'm like, hey, I'm like hitting my buddy. I'm like, yo, like, look, look. And he was like, oh, shit. And like, it's just like this giant motherfucker with like his like crazy tattoos. And literally nobody in this gas station knows who the fuck Randy Orton is. They think he's just some big motherfucker buying. Ci- he's buying cigarettes. He was buying cigarettes. Yeah. And I'm just like freaking out because I'm like, holy shit, like that's literally Randy Orton. And like, I, I don't want to bother him because he looked really intimidating. And also it's like, I, I just didn't want to like fanboy on on him yeah. uh, in the middle of the day. So I, I just like left him alone. But then like we see him like later that night fucking wrestling. Like, Dude, this guy was just buying cigarettes. He's probably smoking in the back. Just you know, being crazy, but yeah, it, it was just yeah. such an interesting thing. Like literally nobody knew who he was, but like me and my buddy were just like freaking out because he just walked in like, you know, like he's not just like some crazy superstar. I'm like, dude, why don't they just like send somebody to buy cigarettes for you? But he just rolled up in like this blacked out sprinter, hopped out, bought cigarettes and left. Yeah. I mean, I would think that like, even like as, as you know, like famous as you get, you still would want to like try to live some, sort of semblance of like a normal life so like running into the gas station to buy a pack of cigarettes is probably that Mm -hmm. yeah 
I, uh, you know, I, I'm a huge Joe Rogan fan and, um, the, I, the I last time, <laughs> the, the, the last I time I, I saw him, you. uh, saw him in Disneyland, uh, like you've seen him in person. It, oh, okay. I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll tell you both stories about how I, I met Joe Rogan, but the, the last time I, I saw Joe Rogan, uh, we were, uh, I'm, we're in Disneyland on main street and I see him leaving and it's like him, his family. And he has like these plaids with him. Cause like, you know, like famous people or really rich people that they'll hire the plaids to kind of escort them around and to kind of keep people away from them. Yeah. And I, I, I saw him, but he was kind of like trailing in the back as like family was like walking ahead with like the plaids. And I remember I, I, I walked over to him and I was like, Hey, Joe Rogan. And he looks at me and like, he had this like, Oh shit. Look on his face. I swear he thought I was going to ask for a picture. But I told him, I was like, hey, I was like, I'm not trying to blow up your spot. I just want to uh, come over here and say hello. And he's like, thank you. He's like, hello. And I'm like, all right, bye, Joe Rogan. And then he was like, thanks, see ya. And like, that was it, which was like um, cool because uh, he, he's always like been really nice. And, like the first time I met him, I was um, I drove to Eagle Rock to hang out with this girl that I was just like abs- absolutely just like in love with whatever. Um, yeah. And and it was, it was like I can't it was like a Friday or Saturday night. So she's like, oh, like, like, let's go to the strip club. Like everybody hangs out here. I'm like, all right, whatever. So we went and it was like dead. So she was like, hey, I know you like Joe Rogan. He's performing at the Ice House in Pasadena tonight. Do you want to go? And I'm like, sure. Like if like, you know, your friends are there, like you can hang out with your friends while I, you know, nerd out about Joe Rogan and we go uh, see the show. The comic show was awesome. And then her friends were like these like jujitsu people um, who, you know, had like a clothing brand and were uh, pretty popular at the time. So after the comedy show, oh, did we, oh, you're back. I'm, are you back? Yeah. Okay. I'm back. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't know what you said. What was the last thing you heard before I continue? You told me you were going to see some chick in Eagle Rock and then that's, that's where I lost you. Okay. Go to Eagle Rock. She wants to go to the strip club to hang out. We go strip clubs dead. So she she knows that I, I like Joe Rogan. So she's like, hey, Joe Rogan's performing in Pasadena at the Ice House. I, I know you like Joe Rogan and, and my friends are there. Like, do you want to go? So I'm like, hell yeah, like, let's go. So we went, watched the show. And this was the time this had to been like 2014, 2015. At this time, Joe Rogan would still, like, you know, he would do his comedy shows and then he would wait afterwards and take a picture with every single person and, and talk to them because he was, you know, famous, but not like famous like he is today. So, yeah. um, so we, we watched the comedy show and then like we met up with her friends and her friends were like these group of like jujitsu dudes who were like super, uh, you know, uh, well known in like the jujitsu scene. Like one guy had like a really famous clothing brand and he was mm-hmm. viral for winning a match by farting in some guy's face, which was like pretty funny. Um, and then uh, we we waited to to, uh, to talk to Joe Rogan, and um, we we were the last group of people to talk to him. And he like we literally stood in a circle, like Joe Rogan was like literally standing to my right um, in this circle of people, and like we literally talked to him about MMA for like literally like two hours after that's so sick. after his comedy show. And I and the whole time I'm trying not to fanboy, I'm trying to like keep my cool and like you know contribute to the conversation. But it was just mind blowing to me that like this dude just did a comedy show it's super fucking late that he's just here like and we're not even keeping him he's like willingly standing there talking to us about mma for like two hours it was like it was so surreal well that's like his that's like his his like like stand-up is his first love and mma is like his i mean now he's got like so many things that he's into but i mean like like stand-up and mma that, that's like his bread and butter so yeah it, it, it was wild like that wouldn't happen today, but like, just, it was like a, it's like crazy, like moment. So it, it, it was like such a trip to, to think about and, and just to know that, yeah, he was just so chill to talk. Cause like, he didn't know any of us, but he was just so down just to talk to us about MMA. Cause like n- none of us were like, I don't think any of us even took a picture with him. We just wanted to talk to him about MMA. Yeah. yeah like I don't like, there's like a handful of like celebrities that I would love to meet because I'm like, like I'm a big movie guy. I'm like really big into stand up mm-hmm. and like, I don't want to be, I don't want to get a picture with him. I was going to be like, yo, thanks. Like the shit you do is dope. Like I appreciate, I appreciate it. Like that's it. Cause like, and you also have to think though, like, I mean, you probably see you're a fan of Rogan. So you listen to his podcast. Like I listen to a lot of his, his podcasts, like mm-hmm. too much. Like it's insane how much I listen to that fucking show. It's like impossible for him to be faking the person he is. At that You know what I mean? Like, like that, like, 
to think that he's putting on an act on that podcast for hours and hours, like we're talking like when he does like three hour podcasts all the time, dude, or like, dude, you, you fan of protect our parks. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh I, yeah. I, I, I listen to every episode of Joe Rogan. I'm like, I don't listen to every. I'm probably like 60%, maybe 70%. Because I mean, I have like so many, like, I like check when you have someone on that I like. I was in scoped exposure. I was, I mean, I'm like axe to grind, hard lore, form of passion. Like, mm-hmm. there's, I, there's like really like, religiously listen to a lot of these shows. So it's like hard to listen to every Rogan episode. But like, if he has someone on that, that's some like, like historical thing, like any sort of like, like I, I always listen whenever he has Andrew Huberman on, whenever he has like Lex Friedman on, I'm always listening to those mm-hmm. like stand up people he has on. And then like protect our, like I remember like when they were doing sober October, like that was like the funniest shit ever. And then, then they protect our parks. I feel like we came sober October. That's the best. Yeah. I, I, I like, protect our parks better because i do not like burt kreischer tom dude, segura dude oh dude, i love <laughs> i love tom like, oh really don't, like don't i i love tom but like burt is the most he's so annoying i like ari too like a lot of people like think he's like so polarizing because he's like he tries to be as offensive as he can mm. but i still think he's fine yeah but that's his thing I, I if, if you know ari like that's his thing you shouldn't be surprised at like the things that he says yeah. or does um I, I love Shane Gillis. Dude. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> when I'm I'm like bummed because like I'm like I can't see comedy in an arena. Okay. Like it does nothing for me. For like, sure. There's like a there's a venue here called the Saratoga Performing Arts Center. It's like an amphitheater. And I went, Bill Burr played played here last year and he played there and me and the singer Cole Kiss Kyle, we went. I was like, well I'll, well, I'll just try it. You know what I mean? I have a feeling this is going to be kind of weird. We were like, like fourth row. You know what I mean? Like, so there's like 10,000 people behind us, but like, we're still fourth row. And it just didn't feel, it didn't, it felt weird. Mm-hmm. Like I can't, I can't, so I'm, I've never gotten to see Shane live. So I feel like the only way that I'm going to get to see him is if I like go to, the, go to Austin and go to the mothership and like, just like pray that he's doing like doing a set on one of the nights that I'm there. But like, otherwise, like, I feel like he's like, but to, like that last, like his first special, the one that was on YouTube where the special that had the special Olympics been in it, like mm-hmm. that one is sick. And then this most recent Netflix one is like between that and then like all of like the Gillian Keeve, like things that are all over TikTok now. I feel like he's like straight to arenas. Yeah. Like there's like so mad huge. normies that I know that are like that aren't in the stand up that know who Shane Gillis is. And I'm oh, like, really? Oh, that's yeah. it that's it like it's it's gone i i missed it unless i go to austin yeah but same for rogan like like that's sick you got to see rogan at the ice house like i'll never i'll only like part of me like i always talk about like i just want to like just go like go for to austin for a week and like go to the mothership on like a tuesday wednesday thursday like maybe go see kill tony and like just like see some like six stand-up sets but like yeah that's the thing is like even though like um back when the comedy store was like popping i i I couldn't go to shows because i had work like super early in the morning and it it just never made sense for me to be able to make it out to like the shows that i wanted to go to so yeah yeah. um and and when i went to the the ice house that was when joe rogan still wasn't going to the comedy store that's when he was still like you know quote quote banned yeah that was like that was during that i've only like Mm -hmm. i like the first Rogan stand special that I like, like I always knew who Rogan was because like I'm, I'm old enough to know what fear factor is and stuff. But mm. like, I think triggered might've been the first one. I think it's triggered might be the first special of Rogan's that I, that I watched. Okay. So that might've been post. Like he might've been back in the comedy store then, but yeah. triggered is the one where he has, like, I think the ending bit is like the demon about like Bruce Jenner or something yeah, yeah, yeah. like that's like the, the yeah. finale mm-hmm. it's like wild uh, but yeah i, I and I, I i tell tell everybody like the when i started this podcast i'm like all right i'm gonna do everything that 
Joe Rogan does, everything that Ariel Hawani does on like the MMA hour. And, and this was even back when I used to listen to the fighter and the kid before it, you know, you know you turned all crazy. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm here. Um, oh, Adam's having some technical difficulties. Yo, We're back. Okay. You're good. Yeah. Or, or are you good? I'm good. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe my internet's like being funky right now. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. It's all good. I, I was just saying that. Yeah. I've uh, expressed that the way that I structure this whole podcast is like I follow everything that Joe Rogan, uh, Errol Hawani, and the fighter and the, and the kid does. Uh, so yeah, yeah. If, if you look at like my thumbnails, they're just like Joe Rogan's thumbnails. Uh, yeah. the, the way that I, I tried to, um, you know, do all these like, you know, podcasts, uh, people say interviews, that's fine. But like, yeah, I, I don't have anything written down. Like if you could see my desk, yeah, I have like my phone, which is like locked. I have like a steam deck, like right here. And, and like, there's literally no notes. I, I, I literally don't have anything written down because I modeled, um, or I wanted to model these episodes just like that, because th- that's what I enjoyed listening to is uh, ha- people having these real conversations. And I felt like that's like the best way to get to know people is just to let them speak their, their mind and just, uh, you know, talk about themselves and things like, you know, real things that they've gone through instead of just reading questions off of a paper or having, yeah. uh, you know, these set things that I, w- that, that I want to cover, um, you know, like obviously like I have like certain things in mind, but I just figure right. I'm like, like, okay, like we'll get there, uh, in one way or another, I just got to try to, uh, hopefully navigate the conversation in a fun way to get to those topics. But yeah, it, it's, it's like, those are the podcasts that I love just because it, it, they're, you know, just free conversations and nothing is really like super structured. And I thought it was so cool that, you know, Joe Rogan and Errol Hawani are able to, you know, have these conversations, you know, week in, week out and have them be super interesting. Yeah. Because like, I mean, it, it all really like boils down to the fact that if like the, if you like the, the, like the host of the podcast, you know what they're about. And like, so like, obviously like if you fuck with anything that Rogan fucks with, then you know what you're getting into. And then you see the guests that he has on. It's like, Oh, like, like the, like the David Goggins episodes, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. those are like legendary episodes. And it's like, you like read like the blurb. It's like, Oh, do you know who did like that's how I heard about David Goggins was his first episode on Roman. Okay. And like, I was like, I don't know who this dude is. And I remember listening to it. And I remember like, there were, there were, I'm pretty sure I like sat, like I got home. I was like listening to it driving home and I sat in my car outside my house and finished it. Like I just stayed in my car. Just listened to the whole thing. And it's like those conversations that they like cultivate, like that's like the best kind of podcast. Like obviously like, like like form of passion like dude like what ace does with like his different guests like obviously it's always like structured around like people's involvement in hardcore but it's still like just like they're just shooting the shit the whole time yeah yeah i I, i've listened to so much joe rogan that like depending on the guests um i kind of know what i'm getting myself into like okay is this going to be like a very like educational experience or yeah. is this uh, Mike Baker coming back to scare me about the dude, world? Dude, um, the last Mike Baker episode is fucking crazy, dude. Like when him t- going in on like Palestine and Israel is like terrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, terrifying. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find this episode. I, I can't. I'm pretty sure it came out this year. Where I'm, uh, God, it's, it's going to bother me. Uh, where he has these two guys and they talk about um, Atlantis. And I remember I didn't listen to it, but I can I remember like reading like the the quick little blurb and they were talking about the lost city of Atlantis. I'm like, yeah, OK, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's uh, it's episode 1928. Did that come out this year? Oh, look, uh, does it say the date that it came out? Um, I don't know when it came out, but uh, episode 1928. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Jimmy Corsetti and Ben Van Kirkwick. And they talk about like the lost city of Atlantis, the whole like rickshaw structure. And it's just, uh, it, it, to me, it's so interesting because I'm like, uh, fascinated by like ancient like civilizations and, uh, you know, history and just wondering how we all got here. Like, like, how yeah. is it that, um, you know, there, there isn't some sort of record, uh, you know, to, to give us exactly right. what happened and how we got here. And obviously like with like the burning of like the Alexandria library and stuff like that, uh, you know, it disrupts all that. But, um, I'm just always so fascinated. So like when those kinds of episodes, like those are the ones where I'm like, okay, like 
let me just uh listen to this like you know two or three times to try to like uh you know absorb all this information and actually go do my own research and try to figure out like what's going on and and yeah i feel like joe rogan has put me on to so many like interesting like topics and uh i i, I know Boy. people people give him like a bad rap but i love yeah. joe rogan yeah no i'm i'm i'll die on the hill i'm rogan stan forever <laughs> for sure and and I, I think a lot of people don't listen to joe rogan they just read a lot of stuff about him on the internet and they don't really yeah like yeah like during like during like the, the covid shit like oh my god like everyone was just like talking shit to me like oh you like rogan oh I'm like anti-vax dude I'm like, dude, come on yeah just, like reading like they shit like yeah the, that, that that was a rough one uh, having to like argue with like friends and stuff because <laughs> they're just like dude you literally listen to a guy who's promoting horse dewormer and i'm like yeah that's yeah. and then I, I had to explain to them like yeah like that's the narrative that like these outlets like cnn are pushing to try to you know uh turn him into this evil guy it's like he he took a drug that is used for a horse dewormer but he didn't just take horse dewormer like you have to look into exactly like what he took and uh you know it, it's not yeah. like this whole thing that they're trying to spin and then when he you know showed that they like uh, posted a picture of uh, him and they totally like edited him to make him look all yellow and weird it's like yeah like yeah. Like, yeah. like like these corporations are trying to take him down because he's uh you know trying to steer you away from uh you know uh, from being healthy and, and to cool. be able to survive this without their uh you know vaccines and stuff and it, it's just yeah you know, tough conversation because uh you know weird times but obviously now if, you know looking back things are way different there's way more information uh you know covid wasn't as deadly as we, as we thought it was and you know a lot of people uh, you know could have been saved if they you know weren't put on ventilators and there's just yeah uh, so much inf so much more information now that was deemed uh you know misinformation but now it's like oh yeah like you know this uh, might have come from a, a a lab you know this was a yeah. lab leak and it's just like yeah it's it's really dark yeah yeah, like when it comes to like, like I have like my, like I don't like feed into any like sort of conspiracy theories per se, because like I truly don't know, like I'll never know like what happens. And I'll, and like I hate even calling them conspiracy theories. I just like calling them like it could have happened. Cause like at this point, like I've seen like enough like bad shit happen in my lifetime to know that like, there's way worse things going on and they just don't let us know about it. Yeah. Like, period. Like there's I, like, like it's crazy. Like, like there's someone like I know of like, I'm not, I'm not going to say, I just know that there's some, there's like a, a soldier that I know that's like on the ground dealing like in this like Israel Palestine thing. And like, that's not on the news anywhere that we have like a troop, like, you know what I mean? And obviously he, he's like a, like a higher ranked, like military dude. Mm -hmm. And he's like over there right now dealing like, like, I don't know what he's doing, but I know that he's there. And it's like, that isn't being pushed on anyone. So like the fact that like the Israel Palestine thing that's going on right now, that everyone like that's like in the forefront of like the media, the fact that like we have like, you know what I mean? Like it could be your brother that's over there right now fighting and, you, and like the whole world doesn't know about it means that like, if that's going on, there's like so many there's so much shit going on they just don't tell us and we just kind of like live in the dark like the yeah. world could have ended probably 20 times last year and we didn't even know well they they're trying to keep us within the ice wall they don't want us to go yeah. see <laughs> like, uh, as not real the earth is flat <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. they're charging on the power lines right now yeah it's fun yeah the, the conspiracy theories i i i, I just uh get into them for entertainment like i'll spend an hour on it's TikTok. Funny. it's so funny dude. yeah it's so yeah like it's so funny the the moon landing uh there's like this whole like giants conspiracy theory like some guy in like i think like an organ or something found like a or he saw like a giant like peek out of a doorway on the side of a mountain so like hordes of people are going to this doorway <laughs> like they're repelling down and seeing if this is like an actual doorway and they're like knocking on I, it and it's hollow it, and it's, it's just the grinch dude it's yeah. just the grinch it's not a giant it's just the grinch that's just hanging there yeah yeah and i i, I just like to have fun with them I, I i don't take them too serious like i'm not like uh you know out here really thinking that uh, 
the the ice walls here to to keep us in and there's like a whole other species and there's like a the firmament and all that it's just fun for if me I, if i was on the truman show would you tell me i don't know maybe depends i don't know am i is this are we on the truman show am i truman yeah. you know sometimes <laughs> sometimes i i there's like moments where like I'll like pause. I'm like, I think I've done this before. This might not be the first time that I'm experiencing this. Oh yeah. But it's possible. Yeah. But that, but, but that's the, you know, the part of the fun is uh, not knowing, right. There's like this big mystery. I, I feel like if, if we knew exactly why we we're here, like, are we really here to, to be slaves to the, um, uh, to the Anunnaki just to farm them gold so that they can survive on their planet, planet Nibiru. I don't know. Um, but if I'll, that's, I'll say this, oh, go ahead. If, if, if the matrix is real, I would 100% keep eating the steak. I would not want to, I forget what pill you pill it is that the dude swallows and it's the red or the blue one, but I'd swallow a pill that kept me in the matrix. Because <clears> I don't want to, I don't want to live in the world <laughs> that Neo's living in. Um, yeah, hey, simulations are fun. Uh, there, there, there's a have you ever heard of the game called PUBG? I have, but I've not, I never played. But I remember. I, okay, I know what it is. Well, the makers of PUBG are coming out with like their own like simulator type video game. Like by the, I, I think it's like quarter four of like 2024 is it coming out? And it's like um, someone described it. They're like, wow, this game makes The Sims look like an indie game, which I thought was like hilarious. And and I'm like, this looks like so much fun. Like I want to create my avatar and go work at a coffee shop inside the simulator. And I'm just like, what well, we're getting, <laughs> we're getting so close to, to, to that being like, like a real thing, right? Even with like, uh, like Oculus and like meta quest and all this stuff. It's like, we might already be in it and not even know it. I mean, so like, I don't fuck with kiss that band. Kiss, like I say that band kiss, but like kiss, like the yeah. giant rock and roll band. But like they just announced that they played like their last show and now they're going to play, they're going to be like virtual avatars of themselves. And that's the, the kiss that's going to play shows now. It's, it's fucking really weird. Well, it's like, wait, like, like I, I saw the like, gorillas like a long time ago, or, or, like that. Like I can yeah. go to a concert and just see like animated people. That's literally what it is. Yeah. It's like they're done. Like they're done. They're, they said they're never going to play a sh- like a show like Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley. I don't know anyone else in the band, but like those dudes are like, we're never going to play a show live again. Like it's, they're going to be like virtual avatars of us. Good. Bug it. Let them rest and still pulling yeah. all that money. <laughs> yeah. Um, pretty interesting. I don't know. Like Eminem was like the latest craze in like the Fortnite like virtual concerts um so i i've never participated in one uh but i I'd, I'd be curious to to try yeah i don't i don't know there was like oh man dude this is this is deep do you remember um god i can't remember what it was called it was like probably dude whatever year the turnstile pressures of sea came out i think it's 2011 and 12 I can't remember, what, but there was like this, this like online music thing where you would like log in and you would go into this room and like this little tiny dude would like walk up to like, it's like a DJ booth and he would play the music and like, dude, it was like, it wasn't like mixtape or something, but turntable, holy shit. Um, and like, it was called turntable and you would like go on and like people would just like have these avatars and they would play music. But I met, um, who do we meet? This kid, Dylan Carlo. He, I don't know if you, he sang in that band. Did he sing in Typecast? Yeah, he sang in Typecast, that band that had Joey from Koyo in it. Mm -hmm. Um, I met him in that thing. And it would like, it was just the year that the first Turnstile release came out. And we just listened to Death Grip like 200 times, like in a day. We just listened to Death Grip over and over and over it was like the best thing we ever heard but yeah i met that dude on that virtual turntable thing that that is wild um yeah that stuff's gonna be 
pretty interesting in the future, especially with like how advanced technology keeps getting right. Every year things get better. Like video games look more real. Um, it's it's only a matter of time before. I want to drop in it for dance. I want to physically drop in for dance. That's that's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, if I could, I would like enter like a world like Final Fantasy 14 and be like, all right, see you later, real life Jamie. Uh, we're gonna go be like a like an a, a, like a, an elf or something and carry uh, either a sword or a wand. I I, I don't know if I want to be a healer or like a warrior or something, but I would do it. Mix it up. I would definitely. I would just. I would just keep playing Warzone over and over. Warzone. That's what I would do. You're at the enter the gulag. I, dude, that's that's <laughs> the that's where the that's where the game begins. When you jump out of the plane, you 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 kill yourself right away and you go to the gulag. No, there's no second chances in real Warzone. You go right to the gulag and then you play the game. And then that's when the real game starts. Have you ever done any like virtual reality stuff? No, I've like I've never like had an Oculus on or anything. Like I thought about it, like, but I haven't like gotten to experience it yet. I don't. I feel like I've heard them talk about it on Rogan before. What are those like? You go to like that. You go to like a warehouse and you, like put something on, and it's like a giant warehouse that's like. I forget what I don't know what it's called. Yeah, it's called like Sandbox or something. Yeah, yeah, Sandbox. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I I've done something like that, but on a smaller scale. In in downtown Disney, um, there was a place I I forget the name of it, but. But they had like a Star Wars experience. So basically, you would like um, put on like this like haptic like vest, and then like you'd grab like a gun, and you would go and uh, you'd get shot, and, and you would like feel it, and you'd go through like certain rooms that were like on fire, and you would feel the heat, and it was pretty interesting. I but I, I just couldn't get over the fact that I couldn't see my own legs. You can only see like your your torso and up, and like you can see like your arms and your your chest. But I would mm-hmm. look down and I wouldn't see my legs, and that just really kept me out of the experience because, like, yeah. it was, it was, I, I don't know why I wanted to see my legs so bad, but I was just like, I can't see my legs. I can't believe this is real. Yeah, but, but yeah, I've I've never done anything. I would I definitely would be sick, but I I haven't yet to try something like it. Yeah, I die when I see those like um like over in Japan where they're doing like the VR stuff, but it's like the porno stuff and like the guys are just like totally getting that's, off. I'm just like, this is this is comedy. This is awesome. Yeah, that's that's like a whole nother level. Yeah. It's a whole nother level. Yeah. I I'm trying to go to Japan this year with with my buddy Johnny and I'm trying to convince him to have sex with a robot. Cause, cause I, I saw this there's like this guy on, on TikTok and he uh, lives in Japan and he like shows you like the the darker side of Japan and he's like he's like there's there's a, a, a real place where you can go to this basement and have sex with robots. And he, he showed it. He like went in there and like uh you know uh obviously like um it was like covert like you know camera in like his pocket and he like like kind of showed like the whole operation and i was like johnny we got to go there so you can fuck a robot um, do you watch i think you should leave you no this? no i've never heard of it dude you're literally just dist- so you, i'm telling you you should it's fuck it's the funniest show ever you just like give it a chance it's like okay. a skit show where do i watch You'll, it if you it's on netflix it's called i think you should leave okay. there's like two there's two seasons is this guy tim robinson like i i referenced him earlier in the conversation he's like it's fucking weird like it's when i say it's weird it's like did you ever watch like tim and eric you know what that is i know what that is yeah it's like tim and eric but not as it never it's not as weird as tim and eric gets okay it doesn't get it's like it's like tim and eric light it's like a little bit more easily digestible but even then like it's weird it's like I think it's the funniest show on the planet. But like you're describing like this like going to Japan having sex with a robot thing is like it seems like a skit from I think you should leave. <laughs> okay. That's kind of like I'll, I'll definitely check it out. Like there's if like turn for some reason like Tim so Tim Robinson is like lightly fucks with hardcore. I think he like he fucks with turnstile and like there's like been videos of him like the, the guy, Tim Robinson, he's like the creator of the show. He's like stars in all the skits. He's like, there's like been videos of him at like turnstile gigs and shit, which is kind of cool, but he's like a skateboarder dude. Okay. He, before this, he had like a show called Detroiters. 
which I, with like one of the co-stars or I think you should leave. I can't remember his name, but I bet you you've seen. I think you should leave like memes, and you and you just don't know. Just it. didn't know for sure. Yeah. Well, well, I'll definitely check it out N- now that I know that it's on Netflix. Yeah, cause I because I never heard of it before. Dude, it's it's you, you could blow you could blow through all of it and like it's not long. You know what I mean? It's like probably like maybe you know four hours worth of of like content maybe and that's probably pushing because i think there's like they're like 20 minute episodes and i think there's like six episodes a season or something okay for it's sure quick. <clears throat> okay well bringing it all the way back to cold kiss um <laughs> where you know getting towards the end <laughs> um, getting towards the end of the year uh and I'm just curious about your plans for 2024 because I know you have a couple of shows lined up for the early part of the year. Do you plan to get more busy, or are you trying to like you know buckle down and get that next EP out? Like, what are like what's like the priority? So we're so actually so Ben Shaw, the dude from from Forfeit, he, he's our drummer. He just broke his leg at work like probably two months ago, so we've had a fill in drummer. So we really haven't been writing. Like I've been writing at home. Mm-hmm. Um, just like writing songs and programming drummers or whatever, but we haven't like, like the core group of the band hasn't been together. Our friend Derek, um, he played in that band born low and he was in one came down. He's been filling in on drums for us, but we have, so we're playing this band big shot from the Hudson Valley. We're playing their record release next week with means of survival. Um, yeah, and t- so yeah, Tyler for me, I like we like kind of like never really like went over the whole like background of Cold Kiss, but Tyler for me to survival joined like like halfway through the year this year, so he, he's gonna do double duty that show. Um, then there's an all local free show in January, playing with Hate Still Burns locally in February. And then that drug church show that's getting announced. We're, we're on the drug church show. It's like drug church prize and sunblock. Um, but other than that, we're like, we don't have any shows booked past March. But I mean, like I have three other songs like written, um, just like with program drums or whatever that has to get, get flushed out with Ben. One, he's, he should be back. He should be playing the drug church show in March, hopefully. That's crazy. Um, yeah. How did he break his leg? If you can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, so Ben, we call him blue collar Benny. He's a HVAC guy and he, he fell off. He fell like eight feet off a ladder, like, and just broke his, I forget which bone it was, but now he has like a, like a steel rod going through his leg. Damn. Like a plate and shit. He, 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 yeah. Fucked up. That's crazy. Well, thankfully it was just his leg and nothing else. Cause, yeah, yeah, just, just as like I mean, he's 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 a wild man. I mean, anyone who knows Ben Shaw can attest to it that he's a kooky dude as it is. So it's a uh, I don't know. He's he's the juggalo in the band. <laughs> the juggalo. That's crazy. That's kind of funny. He's big juggalo. It's not a joke. <laughs> oh, okay. Seriously, I I I, no, I, I no, he, Oh yeah, he he ride he rides to the clowns hard. I've I've never uh, really listened to them, so I've listened to I've listened to one ICP song. It it's funny. Like the only the only reason that I know it is uh, um, why am I drawing a blank right now? Bob Wilson um shared like a story, and there was an, he had an ICP song in the background. The story called Chicken Hunting, mm-hmm. and I just thought it was so funny. And now I just like I have one other really close friend who's also like like was big in icp when he was younger so like now we just like i have a group chat with him and ben and we just they just like try to get me like oh you like the chicken hunting song now you're gonna like get into more icp and i'm like probably not but like it's uh it's a fun bit have you has he been to like the gathering i don't think neither of them have been to the gathering they've been to like they've seen icp a bunch okay uh but I don't think he doesn't have one of the gathering. Our other guitar player, Joey, he works at like a like a merch company, like that's owned by Equal Vision Records. But they do like a lot of the merch for, they do all the merch for ICP actually, which is even funnier. Uh-huh. 
So like anytime that there's like new merch coming out, our group, our like our guitar, our, other, our guitar player Joey will like call out Ben Shaw and be like, "Yo, dude, check out this new ICP shit that's about to drop." He's the plug. <laughs> yeah, he he is the true ICP plug. That's wild. But okay, well, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for Cold Kiss. Like, uh, hopefully, you know, we'll record probably middle of the year. The, the goal with the band always was like, we just want to play a fest. We want to play a cool fest. Like we'd love to play like FYA or LDB or this is hardcore. Or, I mean, I mean, there's so many fests now, you know what I mean? Like uh-huh. it's like insane how many there are, but that's, that's pretty much the goal. It's like play a fest, play cool shows. Yeah. Wow. Make well, sure that hardcore is still alive and all the, I feel like you guys are on the right track. So just keep doing what you're doing, and I'm sure it'll happen at some point. Yeah. Okay. Well, I definitely appreciate your time today. This conversation has been actually really fun. Uh, yeah, it's cool, man. Yeah. I, uh, didn't, I didn't know you were a big Rogan guy. I, like I haven't heard you go off on Rogan on an episode, so it's it's sick. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I, I don't talk about it like every episode, but, but I'm pretty open about it. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I die on the Rogan Hill forever. Um, but yeah come back on when the next record comes out whenever that is uh, yeah doors always open for for you and everyone in albany i, I want to see you guys uh you know continue to to, to grow and do good because it's cool to hear that there's like this whole new crop of uh you know kids uh, you know showing interest and doing cool shit out there i i feel like that's that's always uh you know the the goal is to inspire the the, the youth to, to to put in the work to, to not just show up yeah. and be you know flies on the wall but but to show up and know that they can partake and they can you know help cultivate you know the scene that they're you know showing up for so so i, so I think it's really awesome yeah everyone should start a band yes I, I saw some funny meme the other day and like like this is and this is for me like the like this guy with like a new camera who's trying to like you know film bands uh you know here and there but um mm-hmm. uh I'm, I'm pretty sure it was from ahc but they're just like uh, oh, like oh, i know what you're gonna say, like, what you're gonna say. <laughs> we need plumbers and whatever but <laughs> there was just like this whole row of people with like these crazy setups and i was just dying because i'm just like that's so fucking funny but but, but I feel like that's always been a thing, you know, like this war on like, you know, videographers and photographers on stage. Uh, but it's just funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Like, I, th- I think there's there's definitely a need for documentation. But like at the same time. Do both. We need more people. <laughs> we need more people hitting the pit. That's what we need. Yeah. Because yeah. as someone who loves Mosh, I struggle to not Mosh at this point. Like right. I'm 34 years old. I get hurt every time. It's stupid, but I can't stop because it's like, it's, I just can't. It's like everything. I love moshing. I think it's fucking so sick and so cool. We need more people moshing and less people taking photos. All right. Well, I die on that hill for sure. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we sign off, Adam? Uh, listen to deal with God, street hassle, spirit killer. Halo Bite, Grand Street, Wrong Move, uh, Man, Hidden Streets, Heart of Man, Quiet. Shout out Quiet. AOA. <laughs> like, Masha shows, and follow the Albany Hardcore Instagram. There it is. All right. Well, I really appreciate your time today, Adam. Uh, it, it was truly a fun one. Like I said, we'll have you back in the future. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back soon. Goodbye. Yeah.